What is going on guys welcome back in this video we're going to talk about how to properly generate random numbers in C and you're going to see it's not as straightforward as in Python for example and a lot of the stuff needs to be done manually by us. So let me switch the scene here you're going to see that I'm working in a terminal. Um, maybe I should resize my camera so that I don't block too much code. Um, and I'm going to use the Windows subsystem for Linux here. You can use Windows natively, you can use Linux natively, whatever, just make sure that you have some sort of compiler. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file called main.c. And in this file, we're going to write some basic source code. So we're going to start with an include. Uh, I just want to disable the copilot real quick so that we don't constantly get some suggestions. Uh, we're going to say include stdioh for basic input output. And I think for random, we need to include um, stdlib, if I'm not mistaken. So let's start with a basic main function in argc character pointer pointer argv, just some basic stuff, we can actually also not do that doesn't really matter. And we're going to return zero. So what we want to do is we just want to generate a random number and print it out onto the screen. For that, we can just go ahead and say int random number is going to be and we're going to say rand like that. And then we're going to say print f percent d backslash n for random number. There you go. That should be it. Now I'm going to split the terminal here and down here, I'm going to compile this using GCC. So GCC main dot C output is going to be main. There you go. If I now run this uh, slash main, you can see that I get this random number here. The problem is that when I run this again, I get the same number. And when I run this again, I get the same number. And this is going to happen all the time. Now, if I do this in a loop, so if I do it multiple times, um, we're going to get different numbers, but we're always going to get the same different numbers. So if I, for example, say for int i equals zero, i is less than, let's say five, i plus plus, and then essentially, uh, what did I do here? Oh, like that. There you go. Uh, so here we generate five random numbers. And, you know, you're going to get five numbers. So let's compile this again, we're going to get five numbers. But it's always going to be the same five numbers. And before we get into any of the solution or any of the stuff that we can do here, let me show you how it's done in Python, because in Python, uh, we can do this in a way more simple way. Let me just move my camera maybe down here for a second. Um, in Python, I can just go ahead and say neovim Python, uh, or actually main.py. And then I can just go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to import random. And then I say for placeholder in range five, print random dot rand int. And now I can specify a range. So let's say from one to 100. By the way, if we want to specify a range in uh, C, all we need to do here is we need to say modulo 100, for example. So we can actually run both of them. Let's first compile C again. Um, so like that. And then you can see here that I get the same numbers anyways. Um, but I can also go ahead and say now Python three main.py. Oh, my camera is now blocking this part here. Um, I can now say main py and you can see that I always get different numbers. So in Python, it works straight out of the uh, out of the box without doing anything at all. So this is not possible in C It doesn't work like that in C. In C, we need to do a lot of the stuff randomly uh, or manually. So <clears throat> let me just real quick resize that. Um, what can we do here in order to fix this? Now, one thing that we can do, let me just one more time move my camera. I think it's best up here. Um, one thing that we can do here is provide a seat. 
So we can seed the randomness with a certain value. For example, if I say S rand, I think that's for uh, for the seed. Was it S rand? Yes. And if I say 100, for example, here, then uh, if I go ahead, compile and run this, you can see that we get different numbers now, but we always get the same different numbers. So the seed influences the randomness, but it cannot be a constant. We cannot always pass 100 because then we're going to get the same numbers uh, as well. And this is not what we want to have. So we have to enter something here that changes over time. And what is more suited to be something that changes over time than time itself. So let's go ahead and just include time dot h. And what we can pass here is we can pass time null, basically the current moment. Um, so I can go ahead now compile this, run this and we get different results every time. So you might say it's perfect, but it's not. Let me show you why now we have to to be a little bit hyperactive here to trigger this. But if we run this in the same second twice, you can see we get the same values because time is not in milliseconds, it's in seconds. And even if it was in milliseconds, it is a problem. So I can also go ahead now and every time when I run the program, I can print also the time. So I can say time is and then I'm going to have a placeholder for a long and then backslash n. And we're going to say time null like that. And you're going to see that we're going to get different numbers if the time changes. So if we compile that again, and if I run this again, you can see that the time changes always by one second. But if I run this uh, two times very fast, I run this in the same second and the numbers are the same. So this is not optimal randomness, we can improve that um, a bit more. And uh, what we can do for that is we can um, use something else that changes every time we run a program, and maybe we can also combine this with time, what changes every time when we run a program, the process ID, the process ID is a different one. When I run a script now, or when I run a program now, it has a certain process ID. When I do it another time, it will have a different process ID. So what we need to do is we need to include here. Oh, sorry, I need to turn off the alarm real quick. There you go, turned it off. So what we need to do is we need to include another library called uni std.h because this library or this module allows us to use a function called get pit so get process ID. And we can just go ahead now and instead of printing the time or in addition to printing the time without seeding it yet, we can just print the process ID um, like that. So get pit is the function. Now I think it's going to be laggy if I now trigger the man pages, but I'm going to try so capital K, we're going to wait for it. Uh, it's going to take some time to load, I think, maybe because it's on the Windows subsystem and not on native Linux. Uh, there you go. So up here, you can see the man pages, get pit, and basically returns the process ID of the calling process. So what we can do here now is we can run this. And you can see that this is the process ID now and this is the process ID now. And no matter how fast I run this in a row, it's always going to increase by one even if the time stays the same uh, stays the same. So here, we have the same time, but we have a different process ID. So what we can do is we can just seed with a process ID. And in this case, we're always going to get a different, uh, a different random seed. So I can just go ahead and say, um, compile. And as you can see, we always, no matter how many times I run this or how fast I run this, we always get um, different numbers. So what we can also do in order to maximize randomness is we can also add the time here as well. So I can add time null. And then we have a better randomness. Now, if you spawn multiple processes, or if you need random numbers uh, with each iteration, you can also do the randomness in here by providing also a control variable. So we can do this inside of the loop, for example, um, and add plus I now I'm not even sure if that works. Let's try it. Um, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Not sure. No, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Because I think if we run this, uh, could make sense. 
no, it basically shifts the number. As you can see here, we have 26, 386. Here we have 386, 89. So it's not a good idea to do it like that. But you can think of another way to seed it maybe with some appropriate values. But if we do it like that, we can definitely have for this scenario at least um, pretty good randomness, always different numbers. And again, if you want to adjust the range, you can just go ahead and say 500, for example, here. And you get larger values. So this is how you do randomness in C. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know if you want to see more C-like related videos. And besides that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.